everyone, and welcome to episode five of Podly, the official Peacemaker Companion podcast brought to you by HBO Max and DC. Did you think Economos was ever going to save the day? I bet you didn't, but he does, I promise, with a chainsaw. And we also have Economos himself. Steve Agee is here, and we're going to interview him and talk to him, vibe with him, chat with him, and yeah, you're not going to want to miss this. Let's check it out. Why is there a bald eagle in your car? It's Eagly. Eagly is your pet eagle. Yeah. Is your dog named Doggy? <laughs> All right. Do you have a daughter named Daughtery? <laughs> How's it going? I'm Ify Wadiwe. And I'm your other host, Fiona Nova. And this is Podly, the official Peacemaker podcast from HBO Max and DC. And we're going to be talking about episode five today. It's, it's, a, it's a spicy one. Oh, yeah. What, it, was, what, do you, what was your favorite part of episode five? Uh, maybe seeing a gorilla getting a that chainsaw. Was my, that was also my favorite part oh, of yeah. episode five. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, let's get into yeah. it. Yeah. You know, it starts off with uh, that real sad breakfast that he was putting together. Which consisted of an egg, like Tabasco sauce, mm -hmm. sriracha, or like whatever. I don't even know what it was. And then pepper what? in a cup. That is low carb. So I'm, I It is say low that, carb, you know, but he housed it. <laughs> yeah, he sucked that down. And yeah. then he also kind of gave um, Goff yeah, yeah, a, little, yeah, a, little, uh, yeah, a little bit of that juice. Yeah, we're kind of learning that he, he kept Goff. He kept you know? Goff and, and is taking care of him. And is taking care mm -hmm. of him, you know, could not kill this alien and decided to keep it. Yeah. So that's wild. As um, a pet. Yeah. Interesting. And Adebayo having a little trouble at home. Yeah, I mean, I, it, I bet it could be tough, you know, to be like going into espionage as well as trying to keep a a steady relationship together yeah. i also just don't think adebayo really knew what she was getting herself into oh, no not at all not at all so i think it's really taking a toll on her just mentally mm -hmm. as well as obviously the relationship yeah you know she was thinking it was going to be this desk job desk uh, job easy and, simple but like they ended up breaking down that they needed to go to this uh this factory and that, there they learn about like butterflies how they work and this amber fluid that they need Which, to survive yeah, yeah. yeah so they have this amber fluid that um they yeah like yeah they, they just need that to survive it's essentially their food so um we're getting a little by little we're getting more information about the butterflies oh, yeah. what they are yeah the fact that they need to eat and that's usually that, and that also answers why we kept seeing them like from yeah. the, what is it like a a tongue like, yeah, of yeah, some yeah, kind yeah, like their mouth receptacle the mouth, they're just sucking yeah. up this fluid and you have peacemaker being mina economos and we have the explosion of it's the fact that he framed his dad and he th wish he could have framed someone else how can you i know it's a it's it's I'm, upsetting but i'm i'm team economos here, yeah yeah okay? no i'm with him i don't on, yeah. really care oh, oh, if you the mean guy this, gets framed yeah yeah this <laughs> extreme racist yeah go ahead lock yeah, him up yeah you can lock him up i don't really care i yeah. have no empathy what whatsoever yeah. but like we can kind of see sophie and larry not letting it go not they letting it go they won't let it go they kind of i well i think their goal is they want to get peacemaker to jail that's why they're okay with letting his father go yeah but i'm like mm. i don't think they know the full story yeah yeah they don't know the full story <laughs> they don't know what they just unleashed. yeah they have but no yeah. idea and now you have sophie who's a little like suspicious of the whole process mm -hmm. and she asks for uh, you know uh, these these screenshots to right. so that she had she can do her own kind of verification, yeah. which Jeff pointed out was against the rules. Mm -hmm. Like like oh oh you you supposed to be so good, but you breaking the rules to get this white supremacist out of jail. Right? Why are you trying so hard to get him it's like out? It's like, gotta get the right. You're right. One you have in. to get the right you one. Know, the but then this leads to maybe one of the I think the better moments of this of this show probably is this van ride that they go through and they're kind of bonding oh head, yeah head banging find out that economos has the tattoo and we're still starting to see peacemakers start to warm up to economos after all this you know shit Bullying. that he was giving him he's like wait we like the same bands i guess we'll be friends right yeah and um <laughs> and to protect peacemaker from 
you know, Sophie and and Larry being on this tail. Mern gets his inside man in. Prince don't match. The witnesses immediately snitch. I mean, yeah. you know, you know, the husband wanted to snitch immediately because he was already yeah, mad. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. So we got a man on the inside. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's. It feels like there's just so many characters in play right now that like things can absolutely go wrong. Oh yeah. You know when you say like there's too many cooks in the kitchen. I feel like that's right now what's oh, yeah. happening. The cooks. The are kicks cooking. are in, and they're and they're cooking. And I don't yeah. know if it's gonna be a good meal. Oh yeah, but it'll be something. <laughs> yeah, something. But speaking of meals, they went to the factory. They did. And- Which okay, that scene of entering into the factory, and we see more of the power of the helmet because oh, I yeah. feel like we haven't been able to see too much of the, the helmet power. But mm-hmm. this is just another power he has. There's another helmet that has X-ray vision. Yeah. Who knows? Well, he came in blasting. Yeah. So I started blasting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he came, came in, in blasting. Adebayo's like shook. She's yeah. like, boy, what the hell are you doing? Like, and it's like, well, I know they're butterflies because I can see through them. Yeah. I see the butterfly in their brain. What the fuck? X-ray vision. I can see in their brains. You didn't think to give me some sort of signal? Yeah, the signal was I shot her head off. You said you were going to be chill. Do I not look chill to you right now? <sighs> so they're going in. It's going hard. They they get to the 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 center. Everyone's running in, mm-hmm. and they almost turn. They start moving zombie. Ask. They are essentially zombies so yeah. because they're like they're being controlled by a parasite in some way, right? Yeah, but the parasite, <laughs> you know, usually is really intelligent, but uh, you know, depends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they and they're banging down. They're and, banging down. Well, yeah, because they're uh, Harcourt and Vigilante are now trapped in yeah, a room. Yeah, they're trapped um, in a room fighting a a, 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 a gorilla a, that is infected by a butterfly. Which not new information. It can, I guess, take over anything that has a brain. Or because gorillas are cousins uh, or, to Or similar humans. to humans, right? Yeah, like, we, don't, we, we don't have the time But for it's that. also, and if it is a brain, why would the butterfly want to take over, let's say, a dog's brain? I feel like, yeah, gorilla is a great choice if you had to take over any animal. Yeah. You have all that strength. It's strength. Can, it's you, strength, power. Yeah, but that ape uh, didn't stand a chance mm-hmm. against the chainsaw. The chainsaw The chainsaw that it. Economos yeah. came in with. Because, Saving the day. Because Vigilante wanted to be the, the chainsaw well, guy that's in the beginning. that's what the funniest point yeah. is. Like he, he begged to bring it in. He begged. They said no. There's no way they would need it. No. Yeah. And sure enough, they needed sure it. Sure enough, they yeah. needed it. And Economos, he saved the day. Yeah. I told you guys he oh, was going to yeah. save the day. I told you. And then also this awesome scene of just Peacemaker being, again, like a lovable idiot. Like, I think he's just like, he's like, st- you're like, oh, this guy's dumb, but al- also he makes sense. Yeah. Like, right? He's dumb, but he makes so he's much dumb, sense. He's dumb, but it makes so much sense. So he straps a grenade onto a Russian tank, <laughs> essentially, yeah, yeah, yeah. and just throws it into a crowd of butterflies and it explodes. Yeah, it explodes big. Done. And uh, And my favorite moment of after that was Leota is like, why why didn't you tell me to run? He was like, I have to tell you to run yeah, from a Yeah, that grenade. was the best line. That was the first time Peacemaker <laughs> said something that I was 100% on board with. But what also, he said. you would tell someone to run. Like, hey, be careful. I'm about to throw this. You ain't got to tell me to run. It's a grenade. And you saw me. You were right there when I threw it. <laughs> we oh, both man. saw me throw it. I think that was great. Yeah. And but then, then, yeah, we get that great go. moment with them in the van all mm-hmm. together. They had a great mission. They feel yeah. good. And that is when uh, we get that picture snap. And, uh, you know, everyone's feeling good. It feels like a team. Court, yeah, hardcore, yeah, hardcore, yeah, takes up. Snaps that pick. Snaps that pick, Feels yeah. like a team mm-hmm. until the team, Leota specifically, puts on that helmet and sees yeah. that Mern. Mern's a butterfly. Mern we know known all this time. We've been Now new. she knows. I think that was like a great cliffhanger. Yeah. For the next know, episode. I don't know what's going to happen. It's going to answer yeah. all the questions about Mern being a butterfly mm-hmm. because what does this mean? Mm-hmm. We're, we're about to find out. We have to talk. About after this great, beautiful moment, mm-hmm. everyone's feeling good. They're drinking good. a beer, and and I was surprised Leota went back to the trailer to drink Listen, a beer. Listen, I'm team, I'm team both of them, okay? <sighs> but I, I, I do, I feel bad for Leota because I feel like she's under a lot of pressure mm-hmm. from a mother like Amanda Waller, yeah, that's true. okay, as well as trying to just be a good, a good person. Yeah, she, she, she has to go there. 
put the diary under there, then get home in time to they pull the chicken home. out the That's freezer. That's what I'm saying. And yeah, also, yeah. are you really going to disappoint your mother when she's Amanda Waller? That's what I'm saying. I that's mean, why I'd she, be terrified. That's why, that's at, why she dropped at, that. As an that's adult, why she did it. As an adult, she probably still gets the chicken out the freezer yep, for her mom. Yeah, absolutely. She put it in there, then went back home. Yeah. Just like you said. Every black fan watching right now, like, <laughs> kind of shook. Something Because they're twitched. like, did I, did, did, I, I, did, I, did I do did that? Did I forget? Did I forget? Yeah. Well, I mean, hey, we've got Steve Agee here. Oh, yeah. And we really want to talk to him about just being economos and his badass moment. Yeah, yeah. I want the chainsaw. Yeah, I'm going to dial in and see what yeah. he has to say. All right. Okay, we are joined by the wonderful Steve Agee, who plays Economos and Peacemaker. How you doing, and where's the beard? Oh, don't get me started on that beard. <laughs> I, uh, I'm doing great, first of all. The beard, the second they said cut on my last day of shooting, the beard was shaved off in the trailer. It was a real point of contention with, with that, that. I had to start growing that months before we started shooting. So the beard is gone, happily. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm doing great. <laughs> All right, well, let's jump into the first question. So Peacemaker has a different strata of over-the-top over characters. And how do you enjoy playing off both goofs like Peacemaker and Vigilante and then more straight characters like Harcourt or Mern? It's great, and it makes the job a lot easier. I mean, you can't have... You couldn't have an ensemble cast of characters that were as insane as, like, say, Vigilante. Like, it would just it would be a, like having a bunch of rabid raccoons in a sack. It would just... I don't think it would work. You need straight men, you know, like uh, like Jen and Chuck Woody uh, to help kind of ground things. And, um, yeah, it, it, it makes it a lot easier. I mean, James writes for both both sides of the scale um so well yeah oh, wow yeah and I'd, i'll say y'all perform for both sides of the scale right uh, yeah, luckily yeah we get to do you know i get to be goofy i get i get my weird moments but uh i get my serious moments too which is for a character actor like myself who's you know usually i have recurring parts on shows where i walk in at the end of the scene and i'm just like duh this cake's good and that's that's been like my range for like 15 years and thank god i have someone like james to like actually write actual human stuff for me to say and do. yeah I, I mean yeah if I, i'm gonna take two seconds to stand on the comedy soapbox and be like yeah you know i've we've all sat through an la acting class and they're like yeah the comedy yeah. guys get drama better than drama guys get comedy because the pacing and comedic timing is very similar to the pacing and dramatic stuff there's definitely an art to art to comedy and the art really revolves you know a lot around timing and yeah i gotta say though when i read these scripts i was Super jealous of Vigilante. I oh, was yeah. Like, this, this is the best character on the show. This is, that is somebody's dream come true. That is an amazing character that he wrote. Oh, yeah. It's so fun. And yeah, just seeing the levels, I, I felt the same way. But you were talking about comedy and you come from a comedy background. So, how has it been transitioning into more action and violence in the DC universe? It hasn't been that difficult. I mean, for someone who's as massive, out of shape, and overweight as I am, I mean, the difficult part is just, like, running. <laughs> there's there's a scene later on in the series where I'm running, and it was just like, Jesus Christ, James, I don't know if I could do this. I was like, can we have, for the wide shot, my stunt guy do this? And they're like, jeez, okay, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, that part is hard. The acting stuff is okay. And also, clearly, anyone who's with us at this point knows that this show is not straight action drama. It's There is, like, a huge amount of comedy in this, which really makes it a little more uh, comfortable for me. I know. It was super exciting, especially because before I jump back in, I rewatched The Suicide Squad, and it was fun to see mm -hmm. that we get some more, some more of the AG, the AG magic, <laughs> yeah. I, I call it. Happy for me, too. I mean, Economist in the Suicide Squad is, you know, he's just that guy you see occasionally. And there's really no backstory. There's no arc for folks like me or uh, Jen Holland. Um, and so it was cool to do eight episodes of a show where you can see our characters actually grow. 
Okay, so in this episode, we have the scene where John Cena is just kind of just naming celebrities at rapid speed, uh, but you never got a chance to. So I'm going to ask you to name as many random celebrities as you can in 15 seconds. Uh, are you going to start the timing when I say the first one? Yeah, I'm going to just do the fingers. Ready, go. Jason Schwartzman, Judy, D Dame Judy Dench, sorry, um, Ken Jong, Tim Blake Nelson, Judd Nelson, Nelson Mandela, <laughs> Humphrey Bogart, Jack Black. Oh, uh, uh, that's that's, 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 that's up. That's okay. <laughs> well, yeah, when when you're like under the gun, it makes it a lot harder. <laughs> you know, everyone's favorite Nelson. Mandela. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's. I mean, he's a poster on everyone's wall. He's a celebrity, you know? sure. Yeah, yeah, I know. He's definitely been on a, a on a, court, a cover of Tiger Beat. You know, is this the episode where Cena's is just naming celebrities? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's where it's from. Why'd you put him there, you fat fuck? Because I couldn't think of anybody else. What about Ariana Grande or Drake? What? Brad Pitt or Payne Stewart or Doug the Pug, Khloe Kardashian, the Red Tiger from Voltron, Fran Tarkenton, Joe Montana, Joe Montana, Eddie fuck? Murphy, Michael Jordan, Michael B. Jordan, BTS. Eugene Levy? Fuck, dude. John Lovitz? Shut the fuck up and listen, man. I'm giving you a list of people you could have done. Danny DeVito, Will Ferrell, Howard Stern, Baba Booey, Robin Ophelia, Quivers, Alice Cooper, Ozzy Osbourne, Sharon Osbourne, Bill Cosby. He just got out. He's got time on his hands. Amy Winehouse. Dude, Amy Winehouse is fucking dead. Optimus Prime, Shipwreck, Cobra Commander, the fucking cunts from Riverdale. All right, next time I fucking have to frame somebody, it'll be one of all those fucking thousands of people you just mentioned. Yeah, tell that to my dad. Peacemaker, shut the fuck up. That was hard to keep a straight face on set while he was doing that. He was improvising quite a bit, right? Because he was improvising all of that. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> he was. I think the the original line was like, "Why don't you frame like my Miley side?" It was like two people, and then James was like, "Just keep going, John." And so he started, and then it was like half an hour of us sitting there while James was like, "Keep going, do it again, another, more, more celebrities, faster." <laughs> it was it was impress it was really impressive. I I really wish they would post that whole role of him naming celebrities as like a bonus feature or something. Oh my gosh, they they have to. That would that's <laughs> so funny. Oh. It was amazing. He was great. Okay. This is my favorite question. Do you want a clip of you killing a gorilla with a chainsaw played at your in memoriam someday? I would not mind that at all. I, <laughs> that was so satisfying to do. I can't, it sounds disturbing to say that that was satisfying, but I read through all the scripts at once. And, um, when I got to that part, it was, it was all bets were off. I was like, literally, this is the moment I'm looking forward to in the shoot. So it was, and this was what, five episodes in. So it was like, I had to wait like months until we got to it. And I was just like, uh, yeah, that was great what you did, Cena. But um, I'm going to kill a gorilla in episode five. So Yeah, uh, I, I do think in the eventual ranking of kills in this show, that's going to be a top ten for sure. And it's a super monster gorilla. It's not like I broke into a zoo and <laughs> chainsawed a gorilla. It's... <laughs> It's it's an earned kill. Yeah, yeah, you didn't you didn't go after Harambe too. You're like No, no, this is this was earned. Yeah, it was an evil gorilla not to be trusted. Uh you did what had And to all be you there. activists, it was completely CGI, so calm down. I was literally <laughs> chainsawing a a giant board in front of me, so you're all good. But then you were like covered in blood, which I've I've done a few like uh, shoots yeah. where you're covered in blood, and that's always cool for the first two seconds, and then cold for the rest. It's you're reading it, and you're like, oh my god, I'm gonna be drenched in blood. This is gonna look so cool, and then it starts to dry and get sticky, and it's really sticky, and anything you touch is then just covered in blood. This was like halfway through shooting the episode and it's like, oh my God, I have to get put into this blood every day now for the next week just to sit in the office and be like, yeah, I killed a grill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, blood, be careful what you wish for. Blood is, uh, it, it's, it's gnarly. All right. The next, what's the biggest animal you think you could beat in a fight if they were controlled by an alien parasite? I honestly don't think I could kill 
any animal if it was controlled by... I am scared when I come home at night and there's raccoons in my area. If there's a raccoon in my yard, I'll sit in my car until it's gone. I'm so afraid. And that's smaller than it. That's the size of a cat. So it would have to be an animal smaller than a cat, like maybe a mouse. But even then I'd be like, it might give me rabies. (laughs) I, I... I would rather fight a hundred infants than <laughs> than one small mouse. So my answer for this would be like, I think I can fight up to a coyote if it was a... Wow. Yeah. I couldn't. I'm I'm afraid of every animal. <laughs> I, I think if animals realized how scared we were of them, they would rule us. Like horses. Oh, man, Are you yeah. kidding me? Horses are okay with us jumping on their back. If a horse knew how scared humans were of them, they would just be kicking us and being like, no, get away from me. Go plow your own field, idiot. Every animal to me is scary. So your answer is there's no animal that I think I could beat in a fight. My answer is whatever the smallest animal is. And even then it's kind of (laughs) iffy. It's kind of iffy, iffy. So Peacemaker has a disgusting drink called the Peace Train. Uh... What would your signature disgusting cocktail recipe be? Well, when I was in military school, there was a drink I used to make. We called it a brown cow. I don't know if that's an actual, the actual name of it, but it was root beer in milk. It was half root beer, half milk. It was delicious. It tasted like a root beer float. It, it's exactly a root beer float, but it's the ice cream is unfrozen and melted, and it sounds disgusting to me now. Like if I if I drink too much dairy now, it's like oh yeah, my sinuses are plugged up and I have phlegm everywhere. And uh, but brown cow. Okay, brown root, cow. Root, yeah, root beer and milk. All right. Well, before we hop into the eagle email, I just want to you know close out strong and ask, uh, what was your favorite part about working on Peacemaker? I mean, I feel like I would be lying if I didn't say the catering. <laughs> 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 to be perfectly honest, the best part of shooting this was being around people. We started shooting this almost probably 10 or 11 months into the pandemic. So I'm not married. I don't have a girlfriend. So I was by myself for the first half of the pandemic. It was great to just get to go to a set and sit with John and Jen and Danielle and Chuck and, and uh, Freddie and Robert. I'm just naming, the <laughs> but it was great to just hang out with every there. There's a scene uh, in like the first episode where we're all sitting in a restaurant It was just great to just sit there, even though it was like, you know, all fake, like there's just extras and people, cameras around. It was like so nice to just sit at a table with these people and just shoot the shit while we weren't actually filming. And uh, yeah, I got to say, hands down, the best part of doing this was actually getting to be around people. Well, damn, that's great. (laughs) (laughs) You want some Kleenex? (laughs) Before we wrap out this interview, of course, we're going to have to take a question from the Eagly Mail. Ooh. All right. Well, this comes from a user on the DC community boards, and their question is, what's the best item available in the workplace vending machine at Argus headquarters? With any vending machine, it I go between two things. I go between just straight up regular... Lay's potato chips. I imagine they would have those at Argus. Yeah. Um, Or like, for some reason, a Twix. I never eat Twix unless I walk up to a vending machine and it's like, huh, I haven't had a Twix since the last time I was at a vending machine. (laughs) I would say either Lay's potato chips. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say that. It's a brand, but or Twix. (laughs) Well, look, thank you so much for stopping by. It was great. Anytime. I hope we get to do it again. Yeah, me too. Uh, and I, like, I hope there's not like, you know, you see like John Boyega sitting in this seat interviewing you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's got to be you. That, that'll be in my my contracts from now on. All right, all right mine Only too. Iffy. Yeah, we. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much. You have a great day. You too. See you around. Take care. Well, that was a phenomenal 
conversation with Steve. I mean, learned a lot about him. Mm -hmm. He went to military school, which was I just thought was a threat. I didn't know it was a real place. Yeah. Yeah. And now <laughs> it's time for us to give out that peace prize. Ooh, peace prize. It's time. So this episode brought us a great scene, which was putting an explosive on another explosive, oh. which was from the brilliant minds of Peacemaker. It yeah. would just make a bigger explosion. Yeah, yeah. So I think I want to give that scene, that specific scene, a Death to Peace Award. Yo, what the hell is that? It's a grenade I tied to a Russian tank shell. Why not just the grenade? The grenade blows up like two people. How many people does this blow up? I don't know. I invented it this morning. What? <laughs> Eat peace, motherfuckers! Let's go! He was able to do something incredibly bold and liquefy a group of butterflies with just that single Russian tank shell. <laughs> See, I like that you say liquefy. I usually say turn them to juice, and liquefy is much you more You say turn them to juice? Yeah, yeah. Like, like, you know, if you're playing a video game and you do something like that, it's like, yeah, I just turn them into juice. Man, there's just one word for that. Instead it, of saying yeah, turning mm, them into juice, there's say, one word. You I say just liquefy. liquefy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just learned that right now. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, today we learned, learned many things yeah, yeah, you on know? the Peacemaker podcast. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? But you feel free if you want to use turn them into juice. Uh, you know, just uh just <laughs> So, okay, fine. Turn yeah. them into juice, liquefy. Yeah. Do you agree? I think oh, that's a hundred percent. Yeah, because you know, it, it was just kind of fun to see this <laughs> this kind of like this this invention, quote unquote, mm -hmm. by Peacemaker and like the funniness of like grenade only blows up like two people. Yeah. <laughs> There's like 10 of them there, yeah okay we need we need a bigger explosive yeah. and i love that he had it packed and ready because yeah, he, he says like i i might need this i know it's... and he invented it that morning yeah good thing there were no bumps on that van ride oh, over no. yeah yeah right yeah. Imagine, that's a good note yeah, yeah. that was in his back yeah yeah just cool. dangling, dangling around dangling around oh great yeah oh we love peacemaker what yeah we do love peacemaker. <laughs> we here love peacemaker on the peacemaker part. oh absolutely yes we do well now yeah. i think iffy that's all the time we've got yeah yeah i just want to say thanks for listening and watching podly the official peacemaker podcast uh that goes along with the show mm -hmm. uh that comes to you from hbo max and dc now i want you to make sure that you're subscribing so you're staying in the loop knowing when the new episodes are dropping so that you can not miss a single thing and if you're looking for some awesome merch check out shop.dccomics.com for the latest drops of peacemaker merch you don't want to miss it and to stay in the loop of everything dc in the comic world make sure you get yourself a dc universe infinite account so you have access to all those comics maybe even read some peacemaker comics and do not forget to go ahead and follow us on instagram facebook and twitter so you can stay in the loop of everything we're talking about and so you can share with us your favorite scenes from the show also, you got to make sure you stream episodes of Peacemaker and Podly on the HBO Max app. All right. We'll see you next time. But until then, keep the peace. Yeah, we're keeping the peace.